Every two years, the Zetscale community holds a convention. This year's event was the sixth such event. The event was founded by a previous association and first took place in a school assembly hall. After the second event, we moved it to a bigger hall, although initially we had trouble filling the vast building. We currently have a waiting list, so technically there would even be more pieces to exhibit, but we simply don't have enough space to fit them all in. A group called Stammtisch Blomberg was present in Altenbeken. They were exhibiting their module layout, which is an example of really fine model construction. The layout actually comprises several different pieces, which is hard to believe, as the transitions are hardly visible. Personally, I prefer steam engines, but the V100 is a vehicle that you simply have to have on your layout. It's a beautiful locomotive. With its nice weathered appearance while pulling its modernized passenger cars across the layout, the locomotive is sure to attract many spectators among the Z-scale fans. The core element of this bridge is a wooden form, which was later covered with a layer of plaster. I used a pin to scratch the brick pattern into the plaster. The guardrail is made of metal. The Z-scale seems to be on a good path and is enjoying great popularity. Märklin has certainly been playing a big part in this. We are exhibiting all the new products, such as the BR80 as the Insider Club model. The engine comes with a new drive system, detailed rods and a set of five matching cars carrying a load of genuine coal. This allows for a train set true to the original appearance. Steam engines seem to be the most popular Z-scale items, but the V36 was carried out beautifully as well. The current innovations for the summer include these ore cars and a three-part set of well-flat cars with a metallic running gear and loaded with semi-trailers. Five hundred years of purity law in 2016. This laser-cut construction kit of the Weinstefan Brewery perfectly matches the topic of the anniversary. Next year we are going to present a couple of new Z-scale locomotives as well in order to further strengthen the Z-scale division. This certainly is music to the ears of every Z-scale enthusiast. Let's remain with this layout for a little while longer, as it exemplifies the impact that a perfectly fitting backdrop can have on the overall appearance. For everyone who feels that Europe alone is just a tad too small, there still remains the New World, with its scenic landscapes such as the Red Spider Canyon located in Utah. The rocks are made of plaster. I used a special method for this. The little details were added with watercolors and acrylic paint, similar to what one would do on a fresco. The realistic appearance was achieved by mixing various natural color pigments. The entire piece is handmade. The Z-scale is not so widespread in Italy. I'm a member of the Märklin fan club Italia, but they mostly deal with the half-o scale. That's why I'm approaching younger people in particular and trying to somehow spark their interest in the Z-scale, which isn't that easy. I hope for Märklin to advertise more in Italy and adjust their strategy concerning the market there. I think it would be nice for the younger generation to play with the Z-scale, as it could really teach them so much. Building this fantastic layout took more than one and a half years. Now it can be operated by means of automatic and manual control. We can hardly tear ourselves away from Utah. 
but there are other magnificent pieces to admire, such as this one with its nice diesel engines. This layout doesn't represent a scene from real life. It was built at the beginning of the 1990s, and I think what is particularly nice about it is the smooth transitions from nature to the urban scenery and back to nature at the rear end of the layout. This piece contains quite a few eye-catchers, such as the bridges, the miniature town and, of course, the locomotive shed. I've noticed that many parents have to explain to their kids what's going on as most of them don't recognize steam engines anymore. Very often we get asked if the turntable can actually be operated and we take the time to demonstrate how everything works. So the locomotive shed is one of the main attractions for sure. And the wonderful Märklin engine series 001151 with its nice tiny rods fits this scenery quite beautifully. From the locomotive shed, the tracks lead out into an idyllic landscape. The starting point for a layout project like this is usually a couple of photographs. Then I sit down and actually make a first draft of how the layout could look like. I usually make around 10 to 12 drafts until the main concept has evolved more clearly. And how has the event in Altenbeken been evolving during the last years? It's become even better. The quality of the layouts has increased, as has the supply of the products available from brands like Märklin or even the smaller startups. Once again, the meeting has proven that layouts in Z-Scale offer just as many options for richly detailed sceneries as the bigger scales. One just has to take a closer look to discern what's going on. I think it has become clear now that the customers' wishes and concerns are taken seriously and consequently popular items are now being revised. One of the recent developments have been tangible improvements, such as movable rods on the steam engines. Meanwhile, the engines also come with improved drive mechanism, which has led to much better handling characteristics. I think this also caters to the recent development of Z-Scale fans not only collecting but actually operating their models on track. As this has opened up new markets for Z-Scale models, it has become profitable for Märklin to invest in innovations in this area. At any rate, Märklin has taken measures to ensure that the Z-Scale will continue to prosper as a powerful and elegant brand.